Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. My name is Dean, I'm an alcoholic and an addict, and this is where I could have ended up. Hello and welcome to Inside Addiction. Prevention, education, raising awareness is where it all starts, or unfortunately ends up where we just saw at times. I want to introduce today someone that takes a different approach to prevention, raising awareness, and education and someone that definitely needs to be spotlighted on Inside Addiction. I want to introduce you to Ed Frank. Ed, how are you? Dean, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Why don't you tell us, um, first and foremost, how would you describe your approach to prevention, uh, raising awareness and education? Because again, it's not exactly what I would refer to as textbook. Well, <clears throat> you started the program off with saying when you grew up, I'm going to tell you when I grew up. I'm a little older than you. When I grew up, it was not as cool as it is today, so to speak. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. If you smoked, it was a behind-the-scene type thing. Today, it's out there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's more open. Unfortunately, in August of 2005, I lost my son to cancer. That being said, I said, I got two ways to go, better or better. Mm, I'm not going to be bitter because it's not going to do a darn thing for my wife, my family, my loved ones. And I believe that my son and I had a very important message to bring out, not only to the young people, and that word young, old, and politically correct or not, age difference. Yeah, everybody needs a message. Everyone needs the message. And it's all about awareness. What you started saying when you grew up, when I grew up, cell phones were Dick Tracy material. Uh, visual society today. Our program is simple. We call it Choices 301. It's all about life and the choices that we make. The 301 represents my son's radio identifier when he was on the police department. Oh. So it's a tribute to him. My wife and I decided the program is going to be in honor of our son. And if we can reach just one, we've done something. Absolutely. Back in the day, 1972, we used to take a junk car from uh, one of our local uh, scrapyards they let us use one of their flatbed trucks and we'd bring it around to the schools, the shopping stalls, centers, and so on, and we'll assign it. What costs this? Speed, alcohol, and reckless driving. Well, reckless driving is not a term used anymore. It's called aggressive driving. Yeah. And the whole system has changed. What we did in the day doesn't work. Mm. Personally, you get in someone's face. It's depending on who you're dealing with. The kids don't want to see that. That doesn't work anymore. Some people it may. You may have to use that tactic. Education, the awareness, what we do here in our, our facility, thanks to one of our sponsors, Weather Guard Roofing, he has uh, allowed us to use this facility. We call it the Beacon of Hope Care Center. It represents awareness. It represents no-nonsense approach. Mm. We think we have something unique in how we handle these, these young people. Young and old. Here I go with that word again. But it's... It is. It, it's, it's out there. It doesn't matter who you are. When you're dealing with DWI, getting behind the wheel of an automobile, that's one thing that does not segregate. There's, there's, no, there's no saying, are you Democrat, Republican, Liberal? It doesn't that's, discriminate. That's a, a great point. As a police officer, um, and your son is a police officer, what types of professions, what kinds of backgrounds did you see uh, dealing with people drinking and driving? Was it isolated to one group of people, younger people? Um, so Absolutely not. And we, we were on the gamut right here. I mean, it's, it's become an epidemic. I believe it's an epidemic. Absolutely. And when you start looking at the statistics, and I'm not really a big guy in statistics, but the numbers and the visual that is coming across the computer today, the, the age of the internet, everything is instantaneous. We are a fast society. We're a visual society. These kids want to see it. They want to feel it, they want to hear it, and that's what we do with our program. We actually show a video that was a live cam in a limousine from the July 2005 tragedy that occurred on the Meadowbrook Parkway. 
Which is directly alcohol related. Alcohol related where a driver was going the wrong way on a Meadowbrook Parkway with his pickup truck. He hits a limousine carrying the Flynn family home from a wedding. A beautiful day, the family done everything right. Let's take a limousine, let's enjoy ourselves. They had a plan. This individual's coming the wrong way on the middle of the parkway, hits the limousine head on. Consequent, Stanley Rabinowitz, the driver of the limo, is killed instantly. The family in it, Jennifer and Neil Flynn and their daughters, Katie. Katie was decapitated from her seatbelt. Jennifer, the mom, took Katie and held that baby's head in her arms for one hour sitting on the side of the Meadowbrook Parkway. The driver of that pickup truck did receive non-life-threatening injuries, but he was sentenced to 18, third to 25. He's appealing it. He was charged with murder. It's an interesting point here. Mm. To see if that's going to stand. Public outrage? Naturally. Just recently in Miami, Florida, a friend of mine sent me a clipping. Three young children, ages 10 down killed by a drunk driver. Toledo, Ohio, a drunk driver with a pickup truck going the wrong way on Interstate 280, takes a family of eight that are going to their home in Maryland, kills five of that family of eight on the highway that night. The youngest was eight weeks old. A fiery crash, Nassau, Suffolk County. Police officer responding to a call, officer needs assistance. He gets hit at four in the morning by a drunk driver Broadside takes the police cruiser and puts him into a utility pole. Police cruiser burst into flame, that officer burned alive. Chicago, just recently, an off duty detective hits a disabled vehicle. The vehicle burst into flames, kills two people. He walks away from the scene, is apprehended a short time later. Where does it stop? This covers every city and every county and every state. We are in trouble. We're in trouble. And until society really takes this and wraps themselves around it, that we're killing people on our own highway. Mm. We're killing each other. Never mind the war. It's a mm. sensitive word. We have enough of our young men and women coming home that are disabled, that are going to be messed up for the rest of their lives with post-traumatic stress, loss of life, life or limb, their families. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. And we're doing it right here in the United States. We're killing one another through motor vehicles, through stupidity. Common denominator, alcohol, slash drugs. Drugs are another issue here. Mm. That a lot of our, our young people, I, I say, keep using that expression, the young people, they can't help it. Age doesn't make a difference. There's statistics out there to see that these kids start doing abusing at eight, eight years of age. And that runs the gamut. Now, to think that they're okay, they do a joint, get behind the wheel and it's cool, it's messing up your mind. Same thing with alcohol. Where does it go? It's, it's a stimulant, it's a depressant, whatever that individual wants. There's a lot of mis mysterious things about what we're talking about this morning. <clears throat> Common denominator is yourself. It's interesting. I see one of the signs in your facility that will show is uh, thinking prevents drinking and drinking prevents thinking. That came to me, believe it or not, through a, a, one of our sponsors was in Pennsylvania on a business trip. He had gone down there several times and saw this exact sign up on a billboard. Hmm. And he said to himself, I'm going to write that information down, I'm going to come home, I think Ed could use that in his program. He brought it to a, a fellow that does vinyl work, and he presented it to me. I thought that was really, really sharp. But it says it all. Absolutely. Drinking prevents thinking. Thinking prevents drinking. So what are we talking about? People get a little annoyed with me, and I'm not the legislator around me. Not for that at all. You want a cocktail? I'll sit and have it. In your case, you're recovering. Yeah. That's your business. Yeah. I compliment you for what you are doing. Because coming out and saying, that, you know what? I'm recovering. I can do it. First shot out of the box may not work. Second shot out of the box. Third shot, yes, keep trying. Yeah. Keep trying. But that sign in itself says an awful lot. Gave it to me, and the, the number, number of people have commented on it. Yeah, it's so true. Let's go back to the people in the literally the gamut of people that are affected uh, through alcoholism, through drug addiction, drinking and driving, driving under the influence of drugs, not only the offenders but the victims. You have an interesting, um, I don't know how I would describe it except for the visual is just um, one of the most awesome things I've ever seen as far as educational and effective. 
And that's your wall of shoes. <coughs> well, I said earlier, that's uh, back in the day. Back in the day, it was a, a presentation that uh, that's the way it was back in the day. That's, that's how they presented the scare tactic, if you will, in your face, if you will. This is a soft approach, a graphic approach, but a realistic approach. Everything that we have here at the Beacon of Hope Care Center relates to actual police photos. The shoes represent 590 people that died in alcohol-related accidents in New York State in the year 2007. We don't have no eight statistics yet. But it's great. There's 590 shoes that we had mounted through an effort of a family, uh, the Breen family. Their brother was killed in an alcohol-related tragedy. He was a passenger. Uh, the kids at Colony Central High School came together. We collected the shoes. My wife and I mounted the shoes after the kids in the wood shop made the frames for us, but we have them on display. People can look at that and relate to it. Photos eventually will be coming along with that. The shoes are not the actual shoes of the victims. They represent the people that were killed. We have the photos of the Long Island crash. We have the video of that crash. We have five coffins from the Toledo, Ohio crash, including a baby coffin representing an eight-week-old baby. We have another coffin with a mirror in it. And when people walk up to that coffin and look at that mirror, that could be them. Timelines, we have them all. We have another series of an actual motor that we have in here. That's not from the car that was involved in it, but it's a young underage drinker doing 70 plus miles an hour on a side street in the town of the village of Colony. Hits the rear end of the dump truck, the motor is flown out of the car, it's a missile, goes into a home, 120 some feet away into the garage of his home. Which now the, now we have two weapons. We have a, we we have have a weapon. We have the car and the engine. We have a weapon with the vehicle, we have a weapon, a weapon, literally a missile. He came flying out of that car because he wasn't belted in through the sun. He was in fact a weapon, a missile. Mm. He could have hit someone walking on the street, but that motor coming out of that car was a missile. It missed the gas pipe by inches that was in the, in the garage. The injuries sustained, he suffered major injuries, two weeks in intensive care. His passenger, who was wearing a seatbelt, received a broken collarbone. She survived the injury. He is going to be messed up literally for a long time. Did 10 shots of rum, one a minute, and thought this was okay. And then got behind that wheel. How selfish of him. The people on the highway, the innocent people that were out there. And you talk about victims, the photo of a priest saying his prayers at night in Long Island, walking on a tree-lined street, a drunk comes down and takes that priest out and kills him. It happens. It happens. Where's the end of it? Jackie Severino, I speak of her all the time. Beautiful, beautiful young girl. We have her picture. Hit by a young driver, drunk, blew a stop sign in Texas. Jackie survived. Jackie's picture is up behind us. That tells you what DWI can do. And selfishly, you get behind that wheel, you're asking for trouble. Have a plan. You're going to drink, you better have a plan. 21 is 21. Let's not even get into that. You shouldn't be doing it. There's a whole other issue here, too, about what we're talking about this morning. Social host liability. Parents think that this is okay. I know where my kids are. I've taken the keys. You know what? You're not as sharp as those kids are. And that's just one more way that that's addiction right. and alcoholism is a family disease because now we have these family members that think it's acceptable because it was acceptable when they grew up and it was acceptable when their grandparents grew up. And you talk about back in the day. Now, well, it was okay. My parents let me drink. I let my kid drink, and it's just creating generations and generations and generations of victims. Uh, just so your viewers don't get the idea that I'm some uh, wing nut out there, I have nothing better <laughs> to do. I've got a lot of things that I could be doing, but you know what? I'm dedicated to this, and if I could save a life, and you talk about back in the day, and this is again the controversy here, and it's only a gray area. My mom. I come from the German, Irish, Italian background. I don't know if I want to hug you, stab you, or kiss you at any point in time, <laughs> the emotions. But 
it was okay if we had a sip of wine at my grandparents' home on a Sunday afternoon. A sip of wine. A sip, a sip of wine. It's okay, depending on your religious background. Mm -hmm. If that's what your parents are saying, it's okay that you take part in that ritual. This is not about what I'm talking about. No, not at all. You go to a ball game with your son, daughter, or the family, and you have a hot dog and a beer. Hang on a minute. Nobody's saying to you, boo, you're the bad guy. Absolutely I'm not, not saying that at all. But I'm saying to you, if you take your family to that ball game, and you knock down one, and you knock down two, and then you have another one, and then the game really is exciting. You're into the seventh inning stretch and you go for that fourth one. I want to tell you something. You are selfish. Unless you have a plan, the wife is driving. If you're re responsible and have that vehicle under your control, God help you and the people that you're with. It's just is what I'm talking about. People get confused with this and they want to use it as an argument. There's no debate here. Yeah. No debate whatsoever. Alcohol, motor vehicle. Look at this little little things that they say when you're taking uh, drugs. Any prescription drug you say, do not operate heavy machinery, do not operate this, do not do that. Why? Is it dull senses? You're not thinking straight. You're not thinking straight at all. What's the answer? The answer lies with the people themselves. Common sense. Unfortunately, common sense died a long time ago. A lot of us don't have it. And the people know. that do after two, three, four, five, six, seven beers at the baseball game. Lose I'm okay. What, lose what common sense they did have. I'm okay. Hey, they don't want to look at the reality of it. Right? This is quite a common. I spoke at uh, a church set and I was asked by an individual, how do you know when you're drunk? <laughs> I had to think about that for a second or two and I said, let me ask you a question. How many times did you go to the bathroom since you started drinking whatever you were drinking? <laughs> What do you ask? I said, well, that's a little indicator. That might be a sign. Something's going on there. Okay? Now you figure it out. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me those questions. Right? That's the answer I got. Give you. You may not like it, but guess what? That's an indicator. Okay? Or when you start slurring your speech. Or when you think everything's beautiful. I love you, man. And all the rest of that starts coming out. That's alcohol. You're changing. You are not in control. Period. End of story. Our program focuses on everything that we're trying to do today. It's 2009. It's not 1972. It's not 82 or 92. It's 2009. All the rules have changed. One thing is common. You hit alcohol and you mess alcohol and or drugs, the combination, and you get behind a wheel, you are selfish. No need for it. Where do you think it ends? It ends with the individual. It ends and begins. I believe very strongly in what we're doing. This is not a scare tactic. You know, back in the day, tough love was, was a thing. Um, you mentioned uh, this, is your, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, and, and so on and so forth. I, I, I never understood how I was supposed to relate a, a fried egg to me. Well, no, I, look at the, I look at the wall of shoes, I look at the coffin, that's real to me. That's real to you because we've taken the time and we put the effort into it to ask people, tell me what's impacting you. Mm. We have a little evaluation form that we ask the, uh, the individuals that go through the program, please fill them out. You don't have to sign your name. Be totally honest with us. Tell us about the program, what we need to delete, edit, add to. We're open for all suggestions. But we think we have something very viable here with, with the people. Um, it's, I keep saying it's 2009. We have to stay current of what we're trying to do. Education, the prevention, this is important stuff. To lock everybody up, it's not going to work. However, first time out, I'm a firm believer in it. You get caught drinking and driving, and you want to cop a deal. Your attorney is going to make a deal. It's a straight deal to the IRS. Think about this. A thousand dollar fine, you plead down to a misdemeanor. To a violation, you're pleading down. You're getting a deal. A thousand dollar fine and 15 days in local jail. That's a taste of reality. You hear that jail slam. That's a taste of reality. That's another thing we have in the facility. It's a mock jail cell, a body bag, a mirror in that jail cell. You take a look at it. 
You want to spend any time incarcerated because you did something stupid, something foolish. And again, in fairness to the people, they say, we have a new term, recreational drinker. Okay, if I stop and have a beer on the way home, I'm a recreational drinker. A beer on the way home. Mm. But a beer on the way home doesn't translate into the way I was seeing. Oh, you can't just have one. Have another one. And you have another one, and there comes a friend of yours. Hey, how you been? Great, how are you? Let me buy you a drink. I have, ah, come on, let me buy you a drink. And a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Now you're into the three, four category. Now you're into the apparent situation. Having anything to drink. Anything to drink at all before you came. But you're sitting in that bar stool. You're sitting in that club, wherever you are. I haven't anything to drink, I haven't anything to eat. Now you've got four under your belt before you know it. Depending on what you're drinking. Male, female. Seeing a lot of females abusing the wine. Big time. Major, major thing. I'm sure some of your viewers will be very upset at that comment. That's the way it is. It is when I, I speak is. at victim impact panels and we are seeing, in Omni County alone, we're doing every other month, 200 plus. How often would the victim impact panels, and as a police officer, retired police officer, how often did you see and do you still see the same people? More than twice. Because that to me indicates something where someone has a problem, someone has a serious problem. If someone's sitting in a room with two DWIs, absolutely not everyone that drinks is an alcoholic, but at some point it has to be looked at that if nothing changes, nothing changes, and we can't keep incarcerating people um, and expecting a different result <clears throat> and not addressing the issue. <clears throat> when I speak of these impact panels, I'll be very honest with you, I have seen, I've seen people I know, people I've gone to school with, out there, the second trip around. And I know that that individual or individuals, they have a problem. And people show up drunk. And they show up drunk. Now, there's a point where I'm not, it's just impossible to put everyone in jail. But there's a point in time that you have to look at a lock mm -hmm. that has to be. You just don't throw everybody under the bus. It just, it's not, it's not feasible. It's not realistic. That's where the individual comes in. You need help. What point do you have to really hit bottom, is the expression, mm -hmm. before you say, hey man, I'm in trouble. I need help. Do you lose your family? Do you lose your job? Do you lose your loved one? Do you kill someone? And that's mm -hmm. obvious, that's the end result is, now, where you're going with this, you're going to jail. You know, when you're talking drink, police officers, you know, it's in the paper every day. Can I stop you right there? Can Go we ahead. talk about that? Yeah. As a, as a retired police officer, uh, your son was a police officer. Right. Can we talk about how alcohol affects law enforcement officers? We've talked a lot about how it's affected you in the aspect of what you've seen, what you've dealt with. Um, how about as a police officer and fellow police officers? Because I know there's a, what's it called, the blue curtain? That's the, the invisible line. It's, it's the blue shield, the blue line. Yeah, does it exist? Absolutely. Uh, back in the day, absolutely. You know, yeah, I remember, I went on a job in 1965. Uh, so that makes me a little bit uh, older than Moses, I guess you would say. but. Um, on a serious note, yeah, you know, we have a problem, we have a problem. Back in the day, the tin meant a lot to people, and it still does. There's a lot of good cops out there. Mm, absolutely. But you've got to remember, they are human also. They make mistakes. They abuse the system. They abuse the shield. Chicago, 13 police officers have been arrested in 2007, 2008. Check that out, don't quote me, 2007 or 8, 13. Now, how many police officers are in the city of Chicago? 13,000? Mm. So that number represents a small amount. One is too many to you, right? Does it happen, the, this police officer, off duty, that killed two people, or they burn alive? Suppose he was given preferential treatment several years ago. They're denying all of this. Fact is, he's been arrested a couple of times. Does he have a problem? Only he can answer that question. Does it exist? If the individual, and we, myself and a, and a sergeant from Omni County stopped in the eye, 
Lenny Crouch, uh, we instruct at the Zone 5 Basic School in Schenectady, young uh, people being uh, future police officers, mm -hmm. men and women. And the approach we take is uh, from when I was on the job, starting out, to where we are today, of what they're faced with, the pressures. You work that midnight shift, let's go have a drink at the local whatever. Mm -hmm. right? Does it exist? Absolutely. Do they drink on the job? I would hope not. Hey, I threw my rose-colored glasses away a long time ago. So, the problem with the cops, take a look around, read the paper, listen to the news. They want to be professionals, they have to, first off, act as a professional, gain the respect of the community that they're serving in, and then they'll be treated. Are they held to a higher standard? Absolutely, and they should be. If they're the ones protecting us on the highway, what do you think of them being arrested when they're drunk off duty? Case in point, two New York State troopers hit by a drunk driver several months ago up on the Northway. Damaged their police cruiser that they couldn't even go after him. They had a radio to have him stop. Two colony police officers, both in separate vehicles, parked at an uh, accident. Hit by a drunk driver, it's one cruiser. Put those two officers out of commission for a while. One, one received some serious injuries. Schenectady police. As much bad publicity as they receive, they've been struck by drunk drivers also. Mm -hmm. It's the individual. Back to the cop. Well, I can say to you, if they want to be a professional, we want to maintain that professionalism that we want the public to respect us. We have to gain it first. We have to gain it first. The cops get help? There's programs out there, but you got to remember something. There's a macho image that goes along with this. And it doesn't matter. Because they put the suit on, he or she, doesn't change that individual. If they have a problem, they have a problem. Is there help out there? Yeah. If they want it. If they want it. This is 2009. I keep saying it. Different program. Mm -hmm. right. Do they still do it? Absolutely. Why? It's the individual. Right? You want to throw your career away? You want to throw your marriage away? You want to throw your life away? Go ahead. And that becomes the issue of when do you ask for help? When do you say, I have a problem? What is it going to take? Doesn't it come back to the individual? Absolutely. No. What's the future for choices? The future for choices, I hope that we continue to grow with the help of the community. It's a well worthwhile program. It's no nonsense approach. I would say to you, I had to deliver the messages whatever hour of the morning that your son or daughter or a loved one has been involved in a serious accident. I've had to deliver those messages. To say the words that someone's been killed or they're not coming home, that's the worst thing a cop wants to deal with. Right? The worst thing. I don't want to see that happen. Ed, I can't thank you enough uh, for your efforts. You're one of the most motivated people I've ever met as far as education, prevention, raising awareness, and I truly think uh, the approach that you take is the approach that needs to be taken um, at this point. It's long overdue, and I'm glad you're doing it. Pleasure. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.